Bye bye, Frank Shusha. I like to run around. I don't like to be in small places. It feels good because I feel um, I can go anywhere. Hi, my name is Sirsha. When I came out of my mom's belly, I had been squashed in there by my little, uh, by my twin brother. So, um, I kind of was like a lion when I came out and I roared. So my mom said, let's call her Sirsha for freedom. The chickens and rabbits are over here. This chicken's name is Chicky. She is quite cheeky, but she also just wants to play. This one is called Brownie. She doesn't let anyone pick her up. Uh, I like them all equally, but if I have to say my favorite rabbit, it'd be Kate. I do not like Barbies. I think they're creepy. Um, also, I do not like pink very much. I also don't like dresses very much or skirts. I, I like to play with trucks sometimes, or I'd like to play I'd like to wear blue sometimes. Climbing trees, that's definitely a plus of uh, rural Ireland. I think I was like eight, we just moved to the house. I was on my petrol go-kart and I lost control of the steering wheel and I went through the fence of my neighbor's house. Um, that's how we met the neighbors. My dad wasn't very happy. I have been drawing for as long as I can remember. I think my first like major reaction when I kind of figured out like drawing was my thing. I was like the art kid was when I moved schools and I think I was in third class and people used to get me to draw them pictures for them to colour in during art class. Sometime around TY I actually got into digital art and I begged my mom for a drawing tablet which she gave me and I actually learned how to digitally paint and I started posting my stuff on social media. And it's just been that ever since. I just haven't stopped painting. I like get almost withdrawals if I don't paint or draw for too long. It like builds up in me and I just need to get it out even if I'm just like doodling on a piece of paper. I never thought I'd be overly political. I never saw myself as a political person. I became very inspired by political movements like repeal. I felt like it would have been wrong if I didn't get involved in any way I can. The air traffic collection is four paintings which I did around the issue of abortion in Ireland and travelling for termination. Political work through art is so important and it's so empowering, especially as a young woman. People come to me and say, I see myself in your painting, like I've been there, I feel that. Or people who have never been in that situation to go, 
I understand now that like anxiety and that like frustration. It's like deeply humbling really that people can relate and it makes me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. When I was about two or three, um, I was in a chipper with my mom in East Wall in Dublin and I was sitting up on the counter and Mariah Carey was on the TV and apparently I was singing along and this American guy came in and was like, this girl is going to be a child prodigy. I can't say this word. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll go through it again. And he was like, yeah, this child is definitely going to be a star. She's going to be a prodigy. And yeah, so I think from then on, I've tormented my parents uh, with singing around the house ever since. <laughs> I don't find directly that there's a difference um, between being a female in the Irish industry. Um, I've found maybe in certain situations when it comes to maybe bookers or promoters or people involved in crews that you kind of have to prove yourself to them. Um, but I find that just comes along with being a young musician. I think because I'm quite opinionated um, and that I'll always kind of say it how it is, I think that's the only time I'd ever come across when people would have like a preconception about me as a woman. You know, little moments where you'd look back and think, was that because I am a woman? Or I definitely love surrounding myself with opinionated and strong women because I come from, you know, um, a background where my mom is so strong, my nana is so strong. It's the type of like woman that I hope I have become. So I think with the two referendums in the past couple of years, the marriage equality referendum and the repeal of the eighth referendum, I've definitely seen a different side um, to Irish people that were just a more open-minded country. It's nice to be in that generation of people who, you know, changed, changed a lot of people's lives. I didn't really think before, oh, you know, like my vote or my voice matters as much, you know, obviously everyone's opinions are personal and stuff like that, but I didn't realise that the action we could actually take would actually make such a big difference. So it was great to see. Personally, I don't think that I would like to have kids and um, maybe in years to come, I will want to, but um, just right now, I feel like there is, you know, people put age limits on things or you should have this done by this age and you're going to be married and you're going to have kids, whereas I've always been the opposite to those um, kind of ideals. It's usually not something that's um, received well by other people because they can't really comprehend that, but I suppose some people know that they want that from an early age, whereas I've always known that I don't. <laughs> um, and I think, um, while we're doing a great job, obviously, at supporting each other as women, um, it just other things like that, you know, need to be acknowledged as well, that we need to support women with their choices, you know, and to break those norms as well. We'll end on a bit of sass. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things we do at the parties is balloon modelling and I am going to make you my favourite fastest balloon. No, I'm not. <laughs> My mum and dad broke up when I was about three or four, so I think the fact that the seven of us living up the mountains together on our own made us much closer, um, which I'm very grateful for. Our childhood was spent yeah, running around the mountains and having the crack. My mother has a bell at the front door, uh, a ringing type, um, and to get us home she'd just start ringing the bell. She wouldn't know whereabouts on the mountain we would be, but if we heard the bell we knew we had to come running. Yeah. Sarah, Phoenix, come on, do you want to be in a movie? Oh, <laughs> Leg it. <laughs> and over here, this would have been my view all my life growing up, this mountain here. And at the very top of that is the Hellfire Club. I worked in retail for years and then um, about 15 years ago, I went for a career guidance, would you believe? And um, she told me to be a clown. 
So she went through a load of um, personality tests and then came up with, put them all together and came up with Entertainer as her number one um, suggestion. And um, I can't sing and didn't want to act. So then she suggested the children's parties. And as soon as she said it, I straight away, it was like a light bulb moment. I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. My first party, I was absolutely terrified, sweating, a bit like this, itchy under the arms. <laughs> but uh, now, now I'm yeah, so used to it, it's great. It's easy peasy for me now. We do clown parties, princess parties, pirate parties, pamper parties, you name it, and make up a party. If you, if you think of a new one, <laughs> I'll do that one too. Everybody's always delighted to see us. You get no grief from anybody. Kids give you hugs and kisses, goodbye. They think you're actually a real princess. Um, yeah, I love it. I am going to make you my favourite little balloon. This is a jumping mouse um, and it's my fastest one. So the kids love this one because then they get to play with it and they get to give it a name and then you pull its tail and it jumps and flies. This is the Guinness Bottle Porch. Um, my father and his friends built this. Um, of course they drank it all first and then they built it. But I love it, I actually think it's so cool. I really should build something out of all the bottles I've drank in my life. <laughs> My father was in the Dubliners. I didn't really realise it when I was younger. It's only now, as I get older, how I'm getting more proud of him um, and the work he did. I'd still be a bit shy about saying who my father is. Um, I don't know why I'm yeah, getting braver at that as well. So I was 16 yeah, when he passed away, but he had the brain hemorrhage when I was about three. So he um, lost the power of, le of his left-hand side um, yeah, which was a big, big handicap for him. He tried to learn how to play the tin whistle again. It was just too difficult and he, he wasn't the man that he wanted to be um, and never got back to his full self again. But when I was young, I, I was angry with him for not getting himself together, whereas now I understand that it was very difficult. And, yeah. I think there has been a big change in girls over the last... Uh, 15 years. I have two girls, I have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old and they're way more advanced than I was when I was nine or six. Um, but they're incredible as well and yeah, well able for life, probably better able for life than I was. Apart from when I want them to eat their dinner and they won't eat their dinner. <laughs> but no, yeah, I'm glad that they're strong. I think with Irish women, I think we're very, very supportive. Um, probably because we got a hard time for so long that now we're busy sticking up for each other. I remember my mother telling me that she um, protested outside Neary's and uh, near Grafton Street to demand a pint with Nell McCafferty. So women weren't allowed to even drink a pint or we weren't allowed in the bar, golf clubs, you know, the list goes on and on. So yeah, it's about time we, we stood up for ourselves. If I was boss of the world, <laughs> what would I like to see for my daughters? Um, to carry on going from strength to strength to get more equality in pay, um, and in whatever job they want to do, that they can go for it. Um, it all seems to be possible now, though, you know. Um, yeah, so everything seems to be going in the right direction. <laughs> the coolest thing in the world is being Shersha. It means freedom in Irish. I like my name. Because it's a unique name because not many people have it. Growing up, I really, really liked my name because there wasn't a lot of other searches. But as I kind of came up through the years in school, it kind of became a little bit more common. Um, I was like, no, I, I want this to be my name. It's definitely um, hard to try to get people to say my name properly. It always has been over the years. I get called all sorts of things. It's serious and so I was in shell shock. Sometimes they say sword cat. I think freedom of being comfortable in yourself is like ultimately like the best thing for me to strive for. I don't know, I think I've tried to like detach myself from that ideal that, you know, that I have these kind of points to make in my life to make me happy. That to me is freedom. I'm not really chasing anything. I'm just consistently trying to be involved in what I want to do. The definition of freedom for me is um, to be happy in wherever you are at whatever point in your life. Like <laughs> really, really proud of my name now. It's something that's unique and it has a beautiful meaning. 
and I feel like no matter, it's just, it's tying me to Ireland and it's tying me to home, which is, it's nice to know. I definitely like it because it's unique and, you know, obviously there's a meaning behind it and especially when you go to different countries and things like that, people are kind of asking what it means and it's just nice to have a name like Saoirse.